father and I are worried about you. You haven't been returning our calls for the past few months. What's going on? Last time we saw you, you and Sarah were still fighting. Are you two any better? Please call us back when you can. We love you. Talk about it tomorrow. Bye. Have a good night. Hey Jim, who was that? That's just Danny. What's his deal? I told him to have a good night last night and he barely acknowledged me. Hmm. I wouldn't take it to heart. He's a pretty nice guy and he keeps to himself most of the time. Okay. Are we still going out for drinks later? Damn right we are. if I invited Danny, would you? No, I don't mind. Ah, my shift's over. I gotta go. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, hold on one sec. Hey, Danny. Are you busy tonight? No, not really, why? Well, a few of us are going out for drinks, and I know you said no a few weeks ago, but I thought maybe you'd want to join us? Oh. Um, no, I'm good, but uh, thanks for the offer, Jim. Are you sure? You can invite Sarah if you want to. I really appreciate the offer, Jim. I really do. It's just, you know, it's not really my kind of thing. Hmm. All right. Well, you're always welcome. Have a good night. Excuse me, sir, you're in my seat. What? That's my seat. I've sat in that seat at the same bus station every night. You're in my seat. Well? I'll move out of your spot. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing with you. Excuse me? I just wanted to start a conversation. You know, like a hi? How are you doing? Wasn't good enough? Gotta keep things interesting. Are you going home right now? Well, same here. I just got out of a brutal 12 hour shift like 10 minutes ago.
Hey, I'm sorry about the seed thing. I just wanted to talk to you. You just think that could have been done without being so over the top? Over the top? As I learned the hard way, you've got to stay true to yourself no matter what others say. Yeah, it's true. You're a soft-spoken one, huh? It's been alluded to that's better when I stay quiet. Why would you ever listen to something like that? Well, all I'm saying is whoever alluded that to you was an asshole. Fuck that notion. I'll keep that in mind. Am I being too much? No, you're fine. As long as you're being yourself, like he stated. Would you like to do something together? I'm sorry? Or would you like to go out to dinner tomorrow night with me? Um, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Okay then. No problem. Hey, um, I'll go with you. Will you actually? Um, let me give you my number. I'm sorry, I don't even know your name. Uh, uh, it's Danny Stevens. Oh, uh, Janet. It's nice to meet you, Danny Stevens. This is my bus. I'll see you tomorrow, Danny Stevens. Hey, Danny. Hi. How are you doing tonight? Um, oh, I'm fine. Thanks. Did you just get out of work? Uh, no, I, I got out a few hours ago. How was it? Uh, you know, um, it was another day. I work as a hearing assistant here in Portland. Personally, I love my job. You know, if I wanted to be ignored, I could have just called up one of my old friends instead. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's not that at all. Really? Because I saw you coming up to the door, contemplating coming in, and then you left. So, are you here out of pity or something? Because you'd feel bad if you'd leave me alone here? Oh, the happy bubbly girl will be sad if I don't come back. It's not that at all, it's just... Look, I'm, I'm shy and... Why did you ask me to come here? I know I can be a lot for people. A lot. But you were really patient with me the entire time and... I really appreciated it. I'm sorry, I can be a little impulsive with my temper at times. I, I was in a relationship that wasn't great for me a few years back. I'm, I'm so sorry. I have my moments every now and then, but I'm mostly over it. It just sucked caring about someone who didn't give a shit about you. Sorry, I used to smoke a few months ago. Oh, what made you decide to quit? 
Well, at least you decided to quit. My younger brother started smoking when he was 16 and refuses to quit. What do you like to do? Um... Uh, oh, really nothing of interest. Well, that's bullshit. Everyone has something interesting about them. I'm really not that interesting of a person. Well, why am I here if I didn't find you interesting? I like to draw, but I, I stopped a while back. I like drawing. What do you like to draw? his offer last night and went to the bar with him and Greg. Oh, that's great. Yeah, they're, um, they're actually pretty cool guys. Danny, why wouldn't you talk to them? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's not that I didn't want to, it's just... Uh, I've had some bad experiences recently with one person. Do you see that person anymore? No. Her name was Sarah. I convinced myself she was the best thing to ever happen to me. I was too ignorant to see the shit she was putting me through. The manipulation, the lying. As time passed, it became more and more toxic. Well, the important thing is, is that she's gone. She's out of your life and you can move on. I can't move on. What do you mean? Of course you can. No, I can't. Danny, I was in your exact situation a few years ago. It's hard. I know it is, but you have to. Life moves on. No, I'm not you, Jane. I can't just move on with my life like- Fucking listen to me! If Sarah would do it to me, who's to say that you- What the hell am I doing? Danny, are you okay? No, everything's not okay. I should have told you that. How the fuck did I tell you that? You need to calm down, okay? Please look at me. I'm here for you. I need some space. Danny! Danny, please call me back. I am so, so sorry about last night. Please call me back. Hey, Danny, how's it going?
Everything all right? Yeah, everything's all right. I have a lot to do right now. Okay. Hey, Danny. Can we talk? I prefer not right now, Jim. You've been off the last few days, and I'm worried about you. I'm okay, Jim. Are you sure? Yes, Jim. I'm fine. Thank you. I'm sorry. Danny. Jim, that was not professional. I'm sorry. What's going on? I fucked up, Jim. You know, I fucked it up like I always do. What happened? I was afraid. I was afraid of opening up to her. The one friend who's never judged me for anything that I've done and, and supported me no matter what the situation. You know, Danny, some people are worth fighting for in life. If she means that much to you, I think you already know what you have to do. Good luck. I'm so sorry, Jane. Go away! Oh, no, no, Jane! I'm sorry for the way I acted. For the way that I am. I'm afraid, Jane. I'm so scared of growing close to people. It's pathetic and it's sad and... Jane, I'm sorry. I haven't wanted to experience that pain again. I tried separating myself from others to avoid it like, like a coward. I don't want to be that way anymore, Jane, and it's because of you. I'm not as strong as you are. You embrace what you've been through and I... I'm, I'm stuck in the past. 
You're one of the best friends that I ever had, and you shouldn't have been treated like that. I'm just fucked up. And here we are. Okay. Um, this is currently streaming. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the digital premiere of Begin Again. Just as a quick introduction, my name is Robert Moore. I am the writer, director, producer, and editor of the film. And I'm Ambalaki. I play Danny Stevens in the film. And... Um... <clears throat> My throat. I'm Emily Aberhart, and I play Jane Hitch. Wow, that's a great introduction right there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so again, um, for the how many people are watching currently? Ten people right now. Uh, so thank you for everyone who decided to tune in for Begin Again. Um, this was a decision in terms of premiering the film that I, I've had the idea for a little while now. Um, I saw like a couple friends of mine begin to premiere their main mayhem films and i just kind of got the idea of yeah it's been about two years i think next week marks the first day of production that we began filming which is the uh, the bus terminal and it was uh. like one of those yeah let's let's premiere it and it's kind of like maybe not celebrate but kind of like reminiscent of like how much this film at least means to me i know this film obviously was kind of a big deal for the three of us in terms of like my first short <laughs> film ryan i believe this was the first film you got the lead of if i'm not wrong yeah and then oh. emily it was one of your first films too mm -hmm. so um with that if anyone has any questions in the chat that they would like to ask either myself ryan emily or like all three of us by all means comment and um, we'll answer what all you have. Yeah, I can't, <clears throat> I was just going to say, I can't believe it's been almost two years since we did that first day of filming. Cause I still remember it very, very vividly. Yeah. Yes. Cause it was very, very cold and very long, <laughs> <laughs> but we did wrap a couple hours earlier than we were expecting to. So and early is four in the morning. So, <laughs> okay. So Bodie Olet, of course Bodie's in here. Um, Bodie asks, what was the inception of this project? No, this is Begin Again. For Begin Again, yes. This is oh, not the Chris oh, Nolan film. So um, the inspiration for Begin Again is very much a story of myself and the person who I ended up thinking at the end of Begin Again. I'm saying her name, Kirsten McKay. Um and the story kind of began in high school during my sophomore year where obviously the film stuff was 
changed and manipulated for obviously dramatic effect. In the film, it's a relationship that Danny is facing, and um, in 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 my real life, it was a, a friendship that was just kind of this toxic thing for myself and how it really impacted me in a negative light in the coming years from junior senior year and it was just something where I tried to kind of like downplay it's not as bad as it seems not as bad as it seems and um when I got to college I met the person my second um semester there and she got kind of like enlightened me I'm like this probably is not the best thing for you right now you might want to like think of cutting things off and from that point on it was just really eye-opening and like Again, it, it very much positively impacted me cutting the person out. And I knew when I got into the main Mayhem class, I wanted to do a story that was very much mine. And Begin Again very much is that it's a story of myself and my friend who helped me out during that time. Uh, Haley Moore asked, that monologue was a little brief. Would you have made it a little longer in hindsight? Um, I think it says montage. Montage? montage? Oh, mon mm -hmm. Montage. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm totally misread that. I'm sorry. Okay, um, Ryan. Yeah, no, I. The montage is one of the many things that I would change about Begin Again. That's the number one thing, actually, because in the script, I had a few more scenes written for. It is, this is a draft that neither you or Ryan saw. And I felt like I needed to cut things out in terms of like fitting them into the schedule. So I, and they weren't like massive scenes. It was just more scenes of like you and, and Ryan just kind of hanging out and talking and stuff. And it was just one of those retrospective things to where I wish I just kept them so that Monta wasn't just this couple scene thing. And then boom, we're into the panic attack. While we just had a few more scenes to build up the friendship and the relationship before we jumped into the last half of the film so the montage is definitely something that i wish i could go back and change um uh daniele asks actually um if we're gonna kind of go into things we would change for the montage ryan and emily other things about the film in terms of like your performance where maybe you weren't the happiest hmm <sighs> Uh, Ryan, you want to go first? Yeah. <clears throat> so, like we said before, this is like the first time I was like, I guess, the lead in anything in like one of the first actual like films that I did where I wasn't like an extra or just kind of some bit player. So the first few things that we did in the first few days that we started filming, there was a lot of nerves that were there because one, I didn't know how to even really hold myself on set at this point or how to be the lead of the well as since i didn't go to school for acting i just honestly didn't know what to do <laughs> so i think a few of the beginning stuff like um in the office i'm not the happiest with and i wish i could go back and just change some stuff and look at it now oh i kind of thought i did something different but um i think a little bit of that where now having a little bit more confidence would have really <laughs> helped that uh, beginning scenes a little bit more that's something I think I would have gone back and changed, but that's can't really go back and change confidence. So, <laughs> yeah, for me, I think it would just be specific um, moments in scenes that I didn't like the way that I maybe said a line, um, or I just didn't like, like in the panic attack scene, I feel like when we start arguing with each other, I feel like I could have maybe done a little bit more, um, more energy, I mean, just maybe have it be a bit more high strung than it was. Um, but since we were filming it for a second time, um, I think I was just a little tired at the end of it, just kind of, you know, exhausted. Um, but if I could go back, I would definitely improve the panic attack scene on my part. Okay. Or what leading up to it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I I obviously think you two are both great in the film, but <laughs> how you feel is how you feel. Um, Daniele asks, "What's the most valuable lesson you learned while making Begin Again? How would this experience impact the way you approach your second film?" That is a great question. Um, so one of my biggest challenges when I made Begin Again was casting. <laughs> um, 
when we went into the producer's panel, um, I had a couple locations locked. And for people who don't know, the producer's panel is this group that our teacher assembles. And they kind of, you know, have to pitch your film over the course of like five minutes. And they basically give you the green light to make your film in the next semester. And so when I went to pitch my film, I had a couple locations. I had one cast me member, which was Luke. And I got the green light. What are you laughing at? No, I just feel bad that you only had Luke. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, but so I got the green light and I sent out my casting call maybe two weeks later. And Ryan was the first one to pick up, pick up and said, hey, I'm very interested in this role. And it was between him and one other person. And the moment Ryan sent in just his reel, I was like, this is the guy right here. I want him for Danny Stevens. It was like an immediate thing. And... So I got Ryan like two weeks ahead. And then when it came to Emily, this is this is the story I really like to go into because um, mm -hmm. I struggled, <laughs> struggled to find someone to play Jane Hitch. It was the most tiresome thing. I had one person who I really liked prior who um, came in an audition, did a really good job. And it was one of those things where I offered her the role and she said, oh, sorry, can't do it. So I was like, okay, cool, no problem. And so I still had two weeks to find an actress. And we did the casting call at SMCC. And um, Audra, who played Sarah, did come in and audition for Jane. And audition, um, Audra gave a good audition, but I felt like she, felt, um, she fit the role of Sarah better. So, like, that was good in hindsight right there, but it was still, like, Oh God! Oh God! I still need a a Jane, and so my director of photography, Bodie Olet, made one last um, Facebook post five six days before we were supposed to shoot, and I think he tagged you in it. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Hey, we need an actress. We're filming on Saturday. Please help us out." And luckily, you responded and said, "Hey, I'll help out on this." And so I got Emily like three days before we were supposed to start shooting and it was I mean it ended up working out really well the performances were good the the relationship the chemistry was, was there but one of the many things I wanted to approach with my next project is just getting the casting ahead of time and making sure that I have the time to talk to the performers go over the script and be like okay this is kind of like what we're going for rather than it coming on set and being like okay I know I just cast you. Uh, hi, by the way. So uh, let's just do this scene quickly. <laughs> Instead of having some sort of relationship built prior. And really, in terms of like other um, valuable lessons, it's really just being more prepared, having more confidence, and being able to like walk up to your actors. And just... like I never felt like I, wa I while I was watching your performance, just thinking, oh, that wasn't good or anything. But... I know there was times where I just didn't feel like I had the confidence or I had the courage to just be like, hey, maybe change this thing slightly. I was definitely intimidated and I didn't want to come off as like an asshole, essentially. And at this point now, I know it's more of my job to be like, hey, I'm not maybe a fan of this. Let's try this differently. And just really just building on the, the, act, the, the, the actor-director relationship. And that's the big one for me, at least. Um, okay, so Bodhi asked this, and this is definitely for all of us. Best and worst experience working on this film? Uh, Emily, let's start with you on this. It also says funniest experiences right below that. Um, I just said that because we could incorporate it. Um, so best and worst experience. Uh, my best experience was probably... <laughs> Um, when we had to make a line of apple boxes for Ryan to walk across when he walked out of the, um, when he walked aw away from me after the argument so that he would maintain the same height and not dip in height as he walked past me. That was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And I still remember it and I love it. Um, that was also the funniest, um, worst experience. Um, and this had nothing to do with the film set or the people. It was just filming that first day at the bus terminal. We were filming for so long and it was so cold. Um, and 
I mean, it's winter time. That was the time that they had to schedule to film. So it really wasn't anyone's fault. It was just freezing outside. So. Right. Uh, Ryan. Ugh. Yeah, I think. I guess my best experience, I guess, oh, was I guess a meeting all of you guys because we built some great friendship. We've gone on to do like many other films together in different projects, and it's something that I'm gonna hold on to for the rest of my life, just knowing that this is kind of where things started or built the relationships with all you guys. So looking back, that's the one thing that I like the most about is to you guys and becoming friends with you guys. The worst, I'm going to have to agree with Emily that <laughs> the first night. <laughs> so I think most of us, we weren't, we didn't switch our sleep schedules at all. So we were all just coming off like a normal work day and then yeah. filming all night. And I don't think anyone was really prepared for how cold it was going to be in there. It's like, oh yeah, oh. we're shooting inside. It's, oh, okay. Yeah. Inside a glass box outside. <laughs> no heat. So with one tiny space heater that we couldn't have turned on while we were filming because it made too much noise benches. yeah so yeah. that was probably the worst that i guess the funniest <sighs> yeah i don't want to steal emily's stuff but all the times i was standing on apple boxes because there was <laughs> there was quite a few times <laughs> that was kind of nice well it makes me look tall so i like that or even on an apple box emily was still taller than me so Never mind. <laughs> See, I think that was the funniest. If I'm going to choose like a funniest moment, um, something to go away from your guys, I think the day we shot the cafe scene where it was just like the second scene between you and all you, you together, there were two moments in specific. One is the fact of how we filmed the scene to where Ryan would say a line, Emily would say a line. And there would just be this like 20 seconds of just awkward silence between the two of you. And the conversation would go on with another really awkward silence between the two of you. And there was just this constant, constant, constant thing. And I remember sitting behind the camera with Belle just like awkwardly laughing as like just watching you two awkwardly just maneuver the scene. It was so funny to me. In addition, as well as that, is when Ryan pulls out the lollipop. I yes. remember this one specific <laughs> moment where um, it, when we got the wide, I was like smiling and laughing at it. So when we got to like the over the shoulder shot when Ryan had to grab it, I remember I was sitting behind the camera and the moment he started doing it, I had to go up and cover my, my mouth. And the moment I did, Emily uh, noticed me do it and she just like lost it laughing. And I was like, God damn, I'm the asshole now who ruined the scene. <laughs> yeah. No, I saw the movement, and then I heard, like, a snort of laughter. I was like, yeah. God damn it, Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> so that, was... no, that whole scene, I was biting my tongue, just trying not to laugh while pulling out that lollipop with that awkward <laughs> silence. Yep. <laughs> um, in terms of, like, so highs and lows. So if we're going to go lows, definitely the first time we tried to shoot the ending and the panic attack was by far the most uh, angered I was on set because... I didn't do the right thing, and I take full responsibility for this. Um, the location we locked was had also scheduled a funeral for that day, and instead of me just rescheduling, I said, "No, we can t we can film what we need, and it won't interfere." And I didn't realize how loud it was going to be. I didn't realize where it was location-wise in the building, so they were like directly beneath us. And you could hear everything. So when we were doing the ending scene, we were like very much rushing, rushing, rushing. And it just got to the point where as people, more and more people kept coming in and sound was being destroyed, I just kind of said, fuck this. I, I, I just, I didn't do the right thing. I just kind of shut down. I was just incredibly frustrated. And so when we got to the panic attack, we had an hour and a half to shoot it. And so it was like the most rushed, awfully filmed um, thing you can imagine. It was just so poorly put together. We got it from like two separate angles. And I vividly remember coming back home that uh, back at um, school that day, looking at the footage, and I was like, I didn't even look through everything, and I said, Bodhi, we have to reshoot this. I am not going to be happy looking at it, and we did. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of um, so ending on the high, I actually very much disagree with you guys on the bus terminal, and there's only one specific reason why. Is yes, it was very cold. 
it was an overnight. I am not a night owl. I like going to bed at like 11 o'clock at night. But I was so unbelievably stressed leading up to the film. Like, I, I just cast you, Emily. You two had met for a very brief 20 minutes. I had no idea if you were going to have the chemistry needed. So it was, like, very rushed. Uh, and when we got on set, we had this, like, big lighting setup that was going to take a long time. And we walked on, and the lighting setup took two hours shorter than expected. And it was one of those things where everything just started to fall into place so perfectly. Both of you just gave the performances that I was expecting. I could just kind of sit back and like, I felt like I didn't have to direct a whole lot because you both just kind of understood the roles. You nailed all of the dialogue. You didn't miss a single line that night. And it was just so smooth. And we ended up wrapping two hours earlier than expected. And I think that really set the tone for the rest of the production for just how smooth it was and how successful it ended up being in the end, I think. Mm. Okay. Um, so, oh, my theater teacher asked questions. Okay. That's right. who that is, by the way. Okay, cool. How are you doing, <laughs> man? Um, Ryan and Emily, how do you support each other through these emotional scenes? Well, Emily was napping. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, that was one time. <laughs> yeah, so I was on one side of the door and she was on the other taking a nap. But yeah. <laughs> other than that, I think it was just us having fun in between takes and not jumping around, just kept everything light. We were, we were able to have a trust in each other, which I think yeah. helped the final product. Well, the thing is, is that Ryan and I just got along from the very beginning. We were just joking around in between scenes and, um, you know, definitely just getting along, first of all, is, is a huge thing for co-stars. Um, because then if they get along, then they're, you know, more able to do well in a scene because they like each other. Um, and I think that always helps with chemistry and going through emotional scenes, I think we were just both very focused on, you know, the other person in those scenes and kind of just making sure that we did the best that we could and supporting each other when we did that. So. Very beautiful. And the follow-up <laughs> question for Emily specifically is how does film work compare to being on stage? Oh my God. Um, well, first of all, the line memorization is completely different because on stage you have to memorize all of your lines at once and retain all of those lines over the course of months. In filming, you can learn the scenes maybe a couple days ahead of time, maybe a, maybe on the same day that you're filming if it's short. Um, so line memorization for film is a lot easier. Um, the difference for film and stage is that on stage you have to do it all in one performance um every emotional arc the character goes goes through every nuance that the character might feel emotionally um you have to do it all in the span of like one and a half to two hours um over film you have more time to kind of work out you know how you want to act something out and if it doesn't work the first time then you get to try and redo it versus on stage you might be able to change something the second night of the performance but not on the first so i think film is definitely a lot better when you want to be able to really fine-tune your performance um, and even watch yourself back on a monitor to kind of see whether or not you like the role um, the performance that you've given whether or not you want to change it up at all another thing that you and i have talked about too emily is just being able to edit the performance Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some post boys. Yeah, no, because there are times where I will watch myself back in a play um, that was recorded. Like there was one in Schoolhouse when I played Renfield and Dracula, and there's just a moment that I hate so much, and I I always wonder why the director never called me out on it because it was just so horrible. And looking back on that, I wish that I could have seen myself do that before the performances so I could have changed it, but. Yeah. All right. Uh, Haley Moore asks, are you happy with the final product that began again? We'll start with you first, Ryan. Oh, yeah. For the first thing that I did, I'm 
happy with it. Uh, pretty full. I know a lot of people are, but I'm not like a Johnny Depp where I can't watch myself. I just watch myself and say that everything's bad. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I have a hard time with that. We're watching. I'm like, oh, I suck. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. Nothing against the film. But I think now watching it two years later, I see the things that are how I've grown on it. And it's kind of like a nice looking back with memories. And, you know, it is a good film and I'm I'm happy with it now. At the time, I wasn't. <laughs> uh, Not with that bitch you did, but. <laughs> uh, you, Emily? Um, I definitely agree with Ryan. Um, I remember watching this in the theater and kind of just kind of scrunching into my seat when my when I first came on on screen during the bus sequence because that's a really long scene and that's where I'm like really like hey look at me I'm Jane Hitch and I I it was just really weird and I didn't like hearing myself I hate how my voice sounds I hated hearing it um but that was just me not liking the way I look and sound that had nothing to do with the movie um and I've watched it so many times now that I can count out every beat I can count out you know, I can tell exactly how I'm going to say the line. Um, and so I think just the sign that I've watched it so many times where I can do that just shows that I am really happy with watching it back. Um, and I do think it was very well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you had asked me how I felt about the film a year ago, I were upset that I am absolutely proud of this. Um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. And I don't by any means dislike it now, but the most recent times I've watched it, as in being today and yesterday, just testing out the live streams, um, there was definitely a lot that I would change. There was a lot that I wish I could go back and like rewrite. I, I, I told Emily and Ryan while we were sitting watching the film that I've just written more screenplays. I've just written more in general. So I, I've gotten better. I'd like to think at exposition, specific lines... And when it came to like shot compositions, there were like times where I'm like, I wish I did do this. I wish it went from this angle instead. Um, I also want to give a shout out to my director of photography, Bodie Olet, who did such a great job. Him and Jason Smith, who was the gaff on the project too, who just really given the film an identity and just really honing in on that style. But um, yeah, it's it just like as a creator, you're never going to be fully happy with what you make there's always going to be something of i wish i did this differently i wish i could go back and redo like that so one friend of mine said that you're never really done making the film which is absolutely true and again i can say that for myself this was a film that i made for me and my friend and at the end of the day um she loved it she connected with it, with it personally and i can say that it did the job it was supposed to do. It it was kind of therapeutic for me. I was just able to get all of that. I'm just kind of like a little teen angst out. It wasn't teen angst, but you know, I gotta <laughs> stick that label on. Um, I was able to get all of it out, put it there, and just be like, okay, let's let's move on from here. So yeah, I'm definitely proud of how it is, despite the things that I would change. Daniele says the funniest thing was definitely the MOS banter between Luke Stanley and Ryan. <laughs> I was surprised neither of you brought that up because I thought that was what you guys were going to say. The reason I didn't bring it up was because it's 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 like the ultimate inside joke of yeah. the film and it wasn't like something you could like either see on screen per se. Right. But um I I'm not going to repeat the banter but it's I it's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really funny. It was one of those things where I told them, "Hey, I'm just gonna be MOS. We won't be able to hear the dialogue." And I told them, "Improvise," which is the best decision I made as a director on the film. And the stuff that Luke uh, Stanley, who played Greg, by the way, um, went unnamed in the film. My mistake. You did a good job, bud. Um, and the, the the dialogue that you guys came up with was hysterical. Um, Bodie said, my favorite thing, uh, the, my favorite for anyone asking, no one's asking you, is the second weekend in the office space. One of my favorite weekends working with that crew and shooting in that space. I absolutely agree that, um, back-to-back -back weekend when we filmed in the office was great. It was the time we had the most crew. 
It was the most complex lighting setup we had. And it was just one of those continuing off the first day of momentum. We just go, 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 crank it out. Let's get this done. Again, I know you're not happy with your performance in those scenes, Ryan. I very much am, and I really like how it looked and came together in the end. Yeah. Um, and then the last question we have here is Bodhi says, what's all of your next project either coming up or already have participated in? Uh, I'm going to start with you, Ryan. Good question. Ugh, what's your next project either coming up? Oh, goodness. Uh, it's kind of hard with COVID. <laughs> trying to think. I know I'm helping out with a couple mayhem. So the same thing where this premiered with um, two years ago, the main mayhem film festival. So I'm going to be doing a small part in one and then another supporting role in another one. And I'm blanking on the names of both of them. So <sighs> forgive me. But um, yeah, other than that, COVID kind of slowed everything down for 2020. So a lot of plans kind of got pushed to the back burner. But um, mm -hmm. hopefully 2021 will be a little bit uh, better year. And we'll see, I guess. Uh, you, Emily? Well, um, I'm working on a Mayhem film where um, Robbie's sister actually wrote it and she's going to be directing it. And um, I really love the script. I love the story and I love everybody that I'm going to be working with. So I'm really excited. Um, we're going to be shooting it in February, I think. Um, and we're going to have a, our first table read this Thursday night. So I'm really, really excited for that. Oh, I can't get my voice that high anymore. Um, <laughs> What do I have going on? Um, well, I was going to be doing a film that was supposed Aww. to take place last year where Emily was going to be the um, the uh, the lead in it. And Ryan was going to have a little cameo uh, called Magnum Opus uh, that oh, is yeah. currently on indefinite hiatus due to COVID-19. When it will be made, I have no flipping idea. Um, it will be made eventually. And I hope that, I mean... Just kind of, I mean, if we're going to briefly talk about that project, that's something where halfway making begin again. Uh, again, I loved working with both Ryan and Emily so much. And that project was very much the Ryan vehicle to where he was in every single scene. He was the main character. And I knew for my next thing, I wanted to work with Emily again. And so when I came up with the idea for the film, I was like, okay. I'm writing the role specifically for her. I hope that she says yes to this. And she did. So that worked out cool. Um, and so it'll be made eventually. It's just a matter of when COVID is more under control. And again, look out for Ryan too. Yeah. And I'm getting my COVID vaccine this week. So hopefully it does something. Oh, I know it will. But herd immunity, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so that we can start filming again, please. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, Rick, is his name Osan? Osan. Osan, thank you. Um, thank you for sharing the film. You're all terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, Bodie's calling you out, Ryan, that you just worked on a feature length film. I, know. I already forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pretty Goof, Cough, Cough, Late Nights, Cough. Is that Benji? That's yeah. That's Benji's film. I forgot about that. I don't know who Pretty Goff is. That's a pretty goof. I mean, no, yeah. goof, goff. Yeah, goof. I don't know. I can't read. It's okay. I late nights. Read. I'm working on late nights. Okay, I forgot about that one. <laughs> I'm yeah, bad with names. So, if no one else has any questions, I I guess that's kind of the end of this live stream. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in and watching this film again it, it means the world to me that at least a couple i know some people definitely um oh daniele called you out again ryan you recently worked on something that premiered recently you want to talk about that ryan you're under well, a I don't lot know of... how far back i was supposed to go okay well after begin again i worked on a uh, music video with uh ben rooker and body called uh view from the window so that premiered uh in october i think and then or no we filmed in october anyways so after that yes i coming with Daniele um, that just premiered. Uh, I think you can still watch that on YouTube or Facebook. After that, I did a feature called Time's Up that we just wrapped on. And uh, yeah, so I think that goes back. I don't know. There. 
There, it's his entire filmography, so nobody can give him crap anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. So, um, I, I, I think I'm going to end it right here. Again, thank you all for tuning in and watching this film, especially if you're rewatching it again. I really appreciate it. And so, yeah, everyone, uh, oh. have a good night. Oh, yeah. Hold have on. A good night. Oh. I just wanted to say Bodhi wrote Magnum Opus 2021. Let's go. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> just wanted yeah. to highlight that. It's not going to happen, unfortunately. But 2022. 2022 for sure. Um, have a good night, everyone. Thank you all so much again. Bye.